What up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Raptors 2K Podcast brought to you by our friends at Uber Eats. This is episode 18, 18 of them things in the book. Feeling pretty good about that. Your boy, Phil Visu, my man, Shane, as well. Shane, talk to me, bro. It's been a little while since we did the last one. What you been up to? Man, I was uh, just in Bahamas for the weekend for my bachelor party with like a group of 15 Ooh. of my best friends. So that was a pretty epic time. Um, you know, still kind of coming down from uh, three days in the sun on the beach, water slides, and we had a really cool day. We went out on a boat and landed on this island you can only get to by boat, and they've got this like amazing bar. They just like blast country music. I, it gets eclectic, but you know, it's it's strange to be in Bahamas and all of a sudden you start hearing these like classic country songs, which a lot of my friends, you know, hockey boys, they love. So it was uh, it was an honestly an epic time. What about you? And that's I, well, one, I'm just, I mean, 15 people. I couldn't make the cut of 15, Shane. It's okay. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Talk about do you that. even follow me on Twitter yet? I do, I do. We've solved that. We solved that long ago. But nah, man, that right, sounds I awesome. forgot we're on episode eighteen. Okay. <laughs> For me, uh, I mean, kind of same old, same old. I've uh, actually uh, been getting a lot of things together, like content wise on my end, trying to trying to build up some some branding stuff like that, and uh, just trying to stay consistent in the gym. That's kind of been the main thing, like LA uh, or just like kind of California in general. Man, we've had some funky weather. I think like since the last time we had a pod. There was a snowstorm, like 40 minutes, like north of L.A. Um, every other day it's raining here in Orange County. And then we had like some high winds the other week. So a lot of stuff's been going on uh, for sure. I actually just got back yesterday because I was visiting my uh, my family in Maryland. So I had like five, six days down there, which was really cool. But, you know, other than that, everything's been good. The only thing that sucked is I didn't have any time. I wanted to because I was in Maryland. I wanted to catch a train and go to one of the uh, see if I go to a game in uh, in D.C., but then I realized, like, are they? They're not doing it in person. Are Which, they? what the two K league? Uh, well, so so okay, so everyone's in centralized housing in DC, uh, right. and they have a studio there. But no, all at this stage of the season, everything's remote. So guys That's will be playing. I mean. like, you I know, yeah, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, there'd be no live thing. But dude, I'm in the same camp though. I would absolutely love to uh, to get there for one of the tournaments this year. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe bring some of the AMP guys through, which would be awesome. But I didn't make it to Indy last year, so we should try to coordinate. Whenever you go, I'll go. And we'll have a good weekend. That'd be sick. Yeah, I'd definitely pull up for one of those tournaments. That uh, that would be really good. But, you know, I can't watch a tournament without something to eat, man. You know, I don't know about you. I had to put my Uber Eats order in. I, believe it or not, I'm actually, I'm doing something a little different from sushi and poke today. Okay? So clean cut, classic, American favorite, uh, an Italian sub from um, the homies over at Jersey Mike's on the way. Nice. You know what? I was going to do something else, but I actually like the sound of a sub too. And uh, I think it's like, it's bigger and been there longer in the U S but it's, it's kind of newer here in Canada, which is firehouse subs. I don't know. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Fire, yeah. Mm-hmm. Firehouse subs, very popular brand as well, for sure. Yeah, it's nice. Let like me get myself three. a firehouse sub here. And uh, authentic, truly organic, completely honest plug for, for Uber eats. I missed it being in Bahamas. Um, you know, there's some conveniences that, you know, when you're out there that you, you don't get that you get at home and uh, true story. I was talking to one of my buddies and um, he just uh, sold his company and I'm talking to him, you know, what are you going to do? He's looking at a new house and stuff like that. And yeah. I said, well, dude, like, why not get a spot down here? And I promise you, he said, one of the reasons why he wouldn't is because there's no Uber. He's like, I have just gotten so comfortable with being able to get cars to my house, get things delivered to my house. And he's a real like convenience minded guy. Like he wants I to be, it. you know, he doesn't want to be put out of his way and, and whatnot. So I was, we were standing on the top of a water slide waiting to go down at Baja Mar. If anyone's ever been there, really cool, like water park integrated into the, the, the beach resort. And, uh, and I was laughing hysterically. I was like, oh man, I do an Uber Eats sponsored podcast. I'm going to bring this story up on the next one. So glad I remembered. Shout yes. out Mike. There you go. He's loyal. I respect, respect the yeah, 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 yeah. Loyal to yeah, the he's brand committed for sure. sure. Cool, cool. All right, cool. well, we'll, we'll see who wins. I got a feeling it's mine's going to come first again. I'm checking, man. It's still like processing my order. We'll see. We'll see what happens. See, they've we'll already see. accepted mine. We'll see what happens. It's all good. Um, But no, this is going to be a really good episode. We have actually an OG in the building. Um, which is always a treat because I always like to like, it's always nice to be able to talk to people who have been in, who have been in, in the league since I was in the league back in the day too. Makes me feel less old. So uh, ball like seam is joining the pod today. 
bring him on camera. You guys can see the whole there he is right there. My man Seam. Player, well, how good. have you been? I've been good. Uh in a little bit of transition from playing guard to playing center now, but I'm always up for a journey. Yeah, I was gonna say, like it, that's kind of like the the thing with a couple of y'all, right? I remember last season, like Dimes was playing center, you know what I'm saying? We know how that resulted in you know, a big win right there. You on the center now. Like what what's the 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 reason behind that kind of transition? Cause like when I see you, I'm just thinking like, you know, you're running running the offense or like you're doing the shooting guard duties, like so you playing center, that's just different to me. Um honestly, it's something like I take pride in like knowing how to play the game in every aspect of the game. Like mm -hmm. I play a lot of quick match, a lot of my team, so I know how to mash, make reads at center, all that type of stuff. So honestly, it wasn't my decision. Roy, when Roy brought me over, he told me he had a vision for me and whether I was playing the one or the five, and he said, be open to it. So when he recommended it, I was like, I was a little iffy about it at first. I didn't know I knew how to play it, but I didn't know if I was ready to play it yet. Yeah. But when he drafted the team, I was like, okay, with the team we drafted, I can't cry about it, complain about it. I got to step up, be, be confident in myself. I do know how to do it, and more so be ready to take that leadership role for the team. Being the guys that we brought over there, most of them are rookies, one second year player and put back, but it's just like being confident in myself. It's a great attitude, man. Roy, Roy with the plan. And uh, yes, yeah, I was, you know, Phil, you were acknowledging like, you know, since, since season one, I, when he joined and I was looking at the notes, I forgot he was part of the 102. I mean, one of the yeah, last dude. 102 standing <laughs> for real. That's uh that's impressive. We were talking about how he was on that first Mavs team, you know, first overall pick in dimes and then Dave Fry. And we all know how that kind of translated and he was sharing, you know, a couple of war stories. I'm sure some of them you can bring up on the pod from, you know, what life was like back then, but a lot has definitely happened. It's been a minute. It's like six years of this league uh, and you've been in it every year. That's awesome. Yeah. And great attitude. And like, you know, to, to Phil's point, like last year, that's kind of what we saw with dimes. Now he gave us a, a sneak peek because he started playing it in a, in a couple pro-am tournaments, but it just makes sense. Like when you've been running an offense, uh, you know, from point guard for as often, as long as you guys have, like you understand the floor. Right. And that's what we were kind of talking to yeah. dimes about. It was like, be like a floor general. You like move the pieces around the board. And also I'll say when we had him at guard, when we traded for him the season prior, that was the thing that blew me away. You know, like Kenny is is a top leader in the league. You know, uh, I would have him, you know, in my dressing room every chance I possibly could if I were running a 2K team. But he leads in a different way. He leads by example. He's stoic, you know, et cetera. Dimes is like he's chatty and he's moving people around the board and he's calling for things. And like, you know, I think the challenge with him is you have to, you know, balance and make sure it's just not always focused on him, right? And making yep, sure that yeah. it's focused on unlocking the rest of the team and making sure that everybody's, you know, kind of playing to their strengths. But in incredible floor generaling. Like right away, I noticed a huge difference. So, you know, hopefully that works out here with you as well, because I feel like guys like you who can see the floor as well as you can, you know, can play, can play center if you can, you know, figure out the uh, game mechanics on the, on the controller. So. Good stuff. We'll be rooting for you when 5v5 kicks back in. I appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Seem, how many how many teams is this for you? Cuz you know, Mavs, I, I, let me see if I let me see if I can do it. Hold on. Mavs, <laughs> Kings, um were were you on the Australian team briefly? No, I wasn't on the Australian team. Close okay, though. No, no, okay. I, I, close. Okay. Uh, close. Okay. I got those two obviously Raptors right now. Missing what, one. What's the other one then? Dukes. It was, it was Dukes. It was Dukes last year. That's why. Oh, so it's the Mexican that's, team. That's why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes. I mixed them. I mixed them up. Okay, so I was close. Okay, so four teams right now. So obviously, you find a lot of value uh, throughout the league, which is pretty awesome. What's What's the difference been here? Uh, being, you know, I know you haven't played a full season yet, obviously, but how's it been? You know, playing for the Raptors. Um, it's been great. The biggest thing I feel like we got a lot of, I say, we got a lot of perks here that I didn't have in other teams. Um, as far as things they do for us, like one thing they do before every game, we got cater meals that come in. Like I've never had that before. That's something different. That's something that I like mm -hmm. really want to bring a free agent in. Like somebody that's something like that's a selling point for the team. Um, yeah. Single single apartments. Uh, we got everybody has their own apartment. Um, they everybody everybody here real friendly. Like and we have somebody for each thing. Like we have. If I need help streaming, we have somebody for that. We got Kev who um, head operations. 
we got a coach who only has to focus on coaching. Like, it's just so many people here who help you in so many different ways. It's different. W organization. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I'm about to try and play for that team. What the heck? Cater meals, own apartment. Like, geez, I got to make my own shit. And I got roommates. But, you know, that's, you know, I'm not, I'm not a pro well, player. I get that. No, you don't that. because you always have Uber Eats at your fingertips. Oh, that's, that's actually true. That's true. Shouts to Uber Eats. It's on its yeah. way, by the way. They did pick up the orders. This, one this is why they uh, pay me the big bucks team because you always find the natural ways to integrate the brand, right? <laughs> got to get the sponsor of their yeah. shout outs. Easy well, see, see, season's you know underway. I've been paying attention. Um, watched a few of the games. Like I said, I was traveling for for a stretch there, but um, I've seen some good things. There's been some exciting games. It's good to see exciting 2K. You know, back in Toronto, um, team is three and four in group play. I get everybody advances to next week, so this is just about seeding right now. Um, mm -hmm. We're recording. Excuse me, we're recording on Friday afternoon. The team has their last game tonight at 10 p.m which is a rematch or a makeup game, I guess, uh, with the Lakers, because uh, that first one had to be postponed. Uh, Roy's tried a bunch of different combinations in 3v3. Uh, what are you feeling about like the team and how things are going? You you know, how's practice? You feel like things are on the right track? I feel like we have a, we got a bunch of young guys. So I feel like they're still getting adjusted to the league. And this is the only this is only the second year for 3v3. So not only are they getting adjusted to the league, they're also getting adjusted to playing 3v3 rather than 5v5 all the time. And it's going to be ups and downs. I, be t I tell them that all the time. Just keep your head cool and control what you can control. Because a lot of those games that we lost, by one or two possessions where the other team might got a fluke stop or we didn't control a possession where we should have controlled. And... That's why I always tell them, just control what you can control. Don't get mad about things you can't control. Like, that's really the biggest thing when it comes down to this three stuff because the game is just so – it's it comes down to that last possession. It comes down to one or two possessions that's going to change the game. Yeah, I feel like – I don't know. Like, it's it seems so difficult to work. Like, when you're, like, the, you know, the veteran guy, like, obviously on the squad and you have, like, a bunch of, like, newer people. Yeah, they're talented for sure, but, like, you know – it's different playing with them nerves and, and like and that's just playing like like on your like your monitor like in your own kind of section area too like when you get to like the stage playing stuff like that i i swear and i remember like my first two seasons i see people up on that stage crumble bro they crumbled under pressure my man mel couldn't hit a shot to save his life i hate to say it but i seen it firsthand bro like people crumble up there so like, I guess for you, it's kind of like getting everybody like in the right mental to be able to go and compete when you guys are actually like in person. Because it's, it's a different animal when somebody's standing up talking that ish. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Um, I ain't really, I didn't really like explain to them the stage aspect. Because if you remember me like way back, I didn't even talk back then. So it was like. Silent assassin. That, that stuff then <laughs> like other people talking didn't even phase me. I didn't talk myself. I didn't think, I didn't know anybody at the time either, but. Yeah, it was like I just went out there and played. Everybody don't have the same mindset as me. Everybody don't think like me. So at some point, I am going to have that talk with them. But as far as right now, I got to I'm trying to help them uh, get over this hump so we can become not only even but pass even in our record and uh, yep. get some momentum to go into the stage. When we get there, I have those stage talks with them. Nice. So what's up for grabs in this next tournament? How much prize money? Um, I think I'm pretty sure the winning team gets each. If you win, each winning team, each winning player gets, I believe it was fifteen thousand. Nice USD. Yeah. USD USD a person. Not bad for That's a week in work. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say. Well, what's the biggest competition then right now? Like, what what's the what's the teams that like are kind of like obvious? Like, you guys see yourself as competition for sure. But who are the teams you feel like you have to like kind of look out for? Anyone like any standouts so far? Um, going off of record, I want to say we got, um, the Bucks just because they're six and no, you obviously can't look down on anybody undefeated. You, you have, um, nice. you have, you have Oz. They beat us twice in our, uh, in our seeding games. It's hard to beat a team three times. So hope we're going to bounce back against <laughs> them a third time. Yep. Rare also, for an expansion team to come in and be that good right away too, right? Yeah, that was it. it kind of it didn't shock me, but it shocked me because it's like I, I can't even explain it. It just shocked me, but 
you always gonna be you always gonna be kind of surprised in this league. I can tell you that much. Somebody always <laughs> gonna pop out, pop out and surprise you. And um, who else? There was another team. There was another team. Oh, Dukes, my my team from last year. Like they their team mm. is they drafted a threes team. They're threes beast. And their 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 record right now shows it. So those are the top three teams in my opinion. That just like caught my eye. Just looking at standings and players they have yeah. in the rosters. Is your yeah. is like the squad that you have? Is it like do you think they're more built for threes or more built for fives? I definitely feel like our team has, uh, was more so drafted for fives, mm -hmm. with the intent that since we're all good two K players, that we can adjust and make some money in this threes mode. But we're definitely we're more a uh, team more built for fives. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's only like the second the second uh, the second year for threes. So that's what that's where I'm kind of like. I'm floating is like, I don't know if like the priority is still like fives or like it's shifting towards threes. Cause obviously I think it's dope that you have both modes. Um, some, I guess it does like affect and make it difficult to draft around that, around both. Yeah. I was, I was going to say some teams definitely cater to threes because just because there's just as much money in it as fives. So yeah. if you have a team, like I want to use, I don't want to say we just don't care about threes. If you have a team like us who drafted a team for fives and you have a team that drafted a team for threes, when threes come around, they're going to have a higher chance of making money just off the personnel they drafted for their team versus a team like us who have to kind of get adjusted to playing threes. And we still have a chance because we know how to play 2K, but they have a higher chance coming off the bat. You feel like Oz was drafted for threes? I, I, you know, I'm, I'm out the loop. I'm not the guy who knows, but I feel like that's kind of the chatter I see a little bit. Um, I, I, that's, that's why I said they caught me off guard. I honestly don't feel like they were a team drafted for threes, but they're out there hooping. They, I feel like they adjusted fast, and they're, they're running with their momentum right now. They do have a a, a lock who came from threes. He's been playing prom this year. A little, not a little bit. He's been playing prom this year. I've seen him uh, I, I seen him myself a little bit, Law Rich. Mm -hmm. But I heard he originally comes from the stage community. So that's the only person I really know in their team who comes from the stage community of threes. Other than that, the other two are pro -am players, and they they all adjusted. They're playing great together, and they're off to a good start. So, uh, what's what's the tea? Any drama? What what are the drama points going on around the league that we can talk about? This guy can't help nah. himself. I love it. It's a podcast, <laughs> right? I love it. That's what I we're here it. for the drama points going on around the league. Um, there aren't really any too crazy ones. It's just no, like no, no trade buzz yet. I was gonna no, say, not, who's requesting trades already, man? Yeah, anyone tweeted? I, I want out of here. <laughs> no, it ain't been no tweets, and I want out of here. But um, well, that's just good. Feel the like I, maturing I, then. Yeah, I just feel like it's a lot of like in-house things going on with teams, and um, this is just like a, my outside perspective of things. I just feel like it's some teams who just don't have the best personalities together personalities messing together so personalities mm -hmm. are clashing with teams and i feel like in the long haul it's going to uh bite teams yeah it's so silly because like you see that happen all the time and you know i try to tell the guys when when they get drafted to rappers uprising it's like man everybody like all their focus on is getting drafted getting drafted getting drafted and then you get here and it's like it's not a walk in the park. Like for for yeah. very few teams, is it like a really pleasant experience going through a season, right? So like you, you're essentially your longevity. If you want another shot next year, it's almost entirely dependent for most people on how they handle that adversity. You know what I mean? Like if you just let your frustrations boil over and you start acting out of line, like it's amazing how much that will tank your draft potential or your trade potential, and you know, on the inverse, if you prove to be stable and able to like ride the storm, like you incredibly increase your value to an organization because you can almost yeah, always count on issues happening. And like, and again, like I get why you want to be frustrated, but, but really you want to play professional 2k and only one team is going to win at the end of this thing. So, or, well now obviously a couple teams, cause you've got, you know, yeah. break broken out into threes. So it's like, you kind of have to come in and be like, my goal is to win a championship, but ultimately when I, you know, realize that we just don't have a championship winning team, now my goal is to make sure I get a shot again next year, right? And, and yeah. hopefully the year after that. And if you're like losing and letting yourself boil over, it's, you're hurting yourself. So, you know, I don't know. I think people have to like stop just like reacting in the moment and really come, come into their 2K season with like a strategy and be like, like, this is all about career preservation in a sense, right? Yeah, I, I want, I wanted so. to uh, touch on what you said about uh, you saying how people how people um, 
basically have a stable mindset, you'll increase the longevity in your career. And I really, I honestly feel like that's something that happens for me because I'm one of the guys around the league who you, you, you probably never heard anything bad about. And I've, I haven't had the best season. Like my last two seasons, I say, haven't been the best per se, but I'm kind of surviving off just being a stable person, having uh, good qualities, good, good human qualities. Everybody don't have good people skills when it comes out as far as talking to yeah. people. Can you, leave, can you leave this guy in the room with these sponsors and expect him to act straight and expect him to uh, represent the brand in a good way? And I take pride in also doing things like that and being able to do things like that. And that helped my career in the long run. So I got more, more opportunities than a lot of other people to show I can still play the game at that. That's awesome, man. I love I love hearing that. I I love this conversation Damn. with you, getting to know you, getting to know you a lot better. Like like you said, you're not the loudest, you're not the most outspoken. So for all my years in the league, obviously I know ball like seam because you used to like drop dimes on us. But you know, you know, I didn't know you the person necessarily. You know, couldn't if someone had asked me, I probably couldn't couldn't say much. But it's it's great to hear your perspective, and yeah, it totally makes sense. You know, you don't have to be a star player, and yet you've had you know, a six season career. You've been here since the very beginning. You're, you're down to some of the last few guys from the 102. So speaks volumes, you know, definitely absolutely proves my point. And one thing that I heard that uh, you also possess is IRL basketball skills. I heard that there's a weekly run at MLSC Launchpad, shout out Launchpad. They've always hosted awesome stuff for Raptors Uprising. Um, it's a facility in Toronto that puts on amazing programming for youth from the city. And uh, we've done a lot of cool stuff there with them. But I uh, hear there's weekly runs and uh, you pretty much dominate those. Where you ha Have you played like comp basketball? Like what's your basketball history like? <laughs> um, all right. So I played basketball my whole life. I started off playing baseball. I was always played sports, but as I got older, gravitated towards basketball, obviously. <clears throat> um, played AAU in high school. I played high school basketball varsity. But the crazy part is, I didn't really get any minutes. I was good, but I didn't really get time. And I was like kind of on like a, I was on a tight, a tight route, I'd say. Because I was like a shooter. So if I wasn't shooting, I wasn't in the game. But as I got to um, college, one of my friends from high school, he plays overseas now. Um, we used to work out all the time. We used to work out that whole summer before we went to college. We worked out, played basketball every day. So I got better, got stronger. And I started playing more aggressive and stuff. So when I got to college, it was just like, I tried out, I didn't make it. So I was playing 2K anyway, and the league got announced. I made the league, so it was like kind of a blessing that I didn't make it because I got to play 2K now for my job. Yeah. But it was like all that work. And now I deal with my friend waking up at 6 in the morning to go to the gym. Like, it just is... <laughs> In the long haul, it's like I played basketball my whole life at this point. Like, I don't, I'm not gonna, yeah, like, nobody's better than me. I, I'm gonna stay in the league at, at least. Well, I'm telling you, all that exercise made you think clearer too, and absolutely translated to, to gaming skills. Like, I, I've been preaching that, you know, since my first season with Raptors Uprising. It's one of the reasons why we always did personal training. Uh, you got to have a healthy body, healthy mind if you're going to play video games to your to your top potential. So I have no doubt getting in shape and being real clear headed and being really locked in on like basketball fundamentals probably translated to the reason why you got into the league way back when. And, you know, look where you are now, six seasons later, still still a pro 2K player. That's that's awesome, man. Speaking of, I heard you guys are also working out with the Toronto Argonauts strength and conditioning coach. This goes back to what you were saying about the organization just kind of delivering everything. You've got like a, a sports psychologist to help stay sharp mentally. You're working out with Toronto Argonauts, which is the, the pro football team here in Toronto. Uh, you, you feel like that makes a difference with like team chemistry, team morale, or, you know, translates to in-game ability? Oh, yeah, it definitely, it definitely makes a difference as far as the uh, psychiatrist, psychiatrist and um, trainer with the psychiatrist is like, I'm real big on keeping things bottled in. I, I keep things bottled in and at the end, I just explode. Not in a bad way, but I just like let everything out at once. That's how I am. So when I do get to speak with her, it's like, I don't really have to let things bottle in as long as I usually do. I can let it out at a faster rate. Yeah. And if I do need her to say things that I don't want to say, she can say it for me. And as far as just working out, it's like it's always it's always fun vibes when we go work out because I'm like I'm the I'm the leader veteran guy, but I'm also still like down to earth true. Like any 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 other regular person like having fun. I troll my team, we go work out, make everybody laugh. So it's definitely great for team bonding when we do things like that. 
You know, a lot of a lot of what you say too, like just the way you're you're like uh just like one your mentality to your approach to things. Like I I kind of like think about this a lot with like the original like 102 players. It's like, you know, even if you feel like at some point it's just like, okay, I don't like necessarily always want to play. Like, dude, I think you make a pretty good ass coach. Like just <laughs> just off of your approach cuz I mean, I mean, look at it, right? You got Dave Fry's coaching now, right? You got Moot, he's coaching now too. Like, I think that's pretty sick. Like is that ever like a, a path you think you could see yourself on? Like, obviously, you're still a guy like at the game, but could you ever see yourself like transitioning to like more of a, a coaching or management role within the league? Yeah, yeah, and it's crazy that you said that because right before I right before I got in the podcast today, I was at the uh, the Raptors Arena and their practice court because we have runs in there. On, uh, what's today? Runs in there on Fridays, I guess from twelve mm -hmm. to two, and I was in there. And when I left, me and Kev got on the train and we we're in the train. I said, I said, Kev. I said, I think when I'm done, I was thinking about like maybe I should be a coach. I said, like <laughs> I, I literally said that. I said maybe I should be a coach. Like I understand basketball, I understand 2K, I know how to deal yeah. with multiple personalities of people, keep everybody in line. Um, I'm like maybe I should be a coach. And we were having a nice little conversation on the ride to uh, the streamer in the facility today, and it was just crazy that you brought that up. And I'm like, maybe, maybe, maybe it's something I should do. I should take it a little more serious now. There you go. You, you know what I'll tell you, Seem, a little advice on that. I think you absolutely should take a shot at it. And, you know, it's not always just going to happen when you're ready, right? So one thing you should do is little things every day to, you know, to start planting those seeds, right? To make more awareness that that's something that you want to do. I know, um, you know, you're contributing to the teams and a lot of team in a lot of different ways right now while they're, while they're running three V three and you want to create content, you know, think about that. Like maybe like a little, you know, coaching with seam or X's and O's with seam type content play that you could, you could spin up, right. Start to create that narrative, create a little body of work. When you go to interview, you can be like, yeah, here's some, some X's and O's content that I've created. You know, I think you should you should definitely start to create awareness for that because it might take a minute to find like for an opportunity to align, right? You can't always yeah. control the other side of the equation. Sure. I think, but I think you've you've got the right mentality for it. That's a hundred percent. Yeah. Con what content could be king? Phil knows. Phil's made a career, and I mean, I guess we both made a career, and I'm on the behind the scenes. I feel like more like a glorified personal assistant most of the time, <laughs> but yeah, that, definitely. <laughs> building a content business i can tell you it's a good business describe tell us about putbacks personality i haven't met putback i don't know anything about him i look forward to meeting him but i got in the notes here that uh he's got a personality uh putback is the definition of a true that's 100 percent <laughs> like a true um doesn't take anything serious not in a bad way though i don't, I don't want to make sense of that he doesn't take it he, he makes he makes everything a juke that's the way i should say that Got you. So with that being said, it is times where I have to get on them. Like I've had to have like a serious like one on one with him before, like aside from the team, like to let him know that me and him play like we play around all day. We could play around all day. But it is certain points where I do need you to to lock in and listen to what I'm saying. And that's from like a I've been in the position you're in before, whereas like he didn't have the best season last year. We, everybody knows he's good. He has respect. We respect him. But you got to show people that it's more than just your name. Like, yeah. you got to do the little things that people don't think you do. You got to – let's say you come to practice and you watch film and you kick in the film to us. Let's just say, for example, um, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I want to say, let's say you're not here next year and you go back and coaches ask about you, say – what did coaches ask Roy? What did what did putback do for the team? Roy, Roy can now tell them, yeah, he he watches film. He comes to practice. He broke this down for us and told us this is what the other guard likes to do. So now when other coaches look at him, we have another defensive leader, somebody who watches film, breaks it down for the team, and we're we're well prepared for this next game because we have somebody like him versus the average other fifteen power forwards who don't do none of that who just show up and play. Like yeah. I was explaining stuff like that to him, and. He uh he took note of it, and I I, I definitely know he felt it because of um that first week we that first week of threes he played when he got benched. I, um I know him. He uh, he's full of energy, joy, excitement. Play around a lot, and I could just see it on his face. Like I I know that I've been in that spot before. I know what he felt like. So that's after that I hit him up one on one and let him know those things. It's the reason why you'd be a good coach, man. You read people well. You can tell. 
and you got you know you know how to adjust to the uh the situation right you can troll with him but at the same time you know when it's time to lock in you know and and for for guys who come in and it's like all of a sudden you have to do these things that like you're not used to doing like watching film you're like let me just play the game you know i'll tell you it's it's a lot harder to do in the beginning but you build habits right and that's how that's honestly how i've created my career it's like things i know i have to do i just kind of force myself to do it and and i usually find and i think there's some science on this that like it's two weeks if you if there's something you know you should be doing you don't really love doing it but you can find the motivation to do it for two weeks all of a sudden it'll become a habit and one yeah. thing I believe in is like good habits have momentum and bad habits have momentum. If all of a sudden you're making lots of good positive changes in your life, you will be amazed at how that translates into other aspects of your life. Like you make a couple healthy like like diet decisions and then all of a sudden like you're working out more and then all of a sudden these other things start happening for you. It's it's crazy how that has momentum. So it's, it's great that you're putting him under yeah. your wing, but no also great to hear that he's a troll, man. The team needs some laughs. It's, you know, you're hanging out. You're not just playing 2K. Like you said, you're working out together. You're exploring Toronto together. Like it's good to have a guy that makes you laugh in the room 100%. Yeah. Dude, the funniest guy that I ever met in the league was was on the Raptors. Uh, what was the Quan? Was King, that his name? King Quay. King Quay. King Quay. 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 Dude, that <laughs> that guy. Shout out Quay, just, man. Yeah, we had Dude, a lot of episodes. That was hilarious. Time. Yeah. My most recent interaction with him, I like posted some thing from uh, a Texas road trip with AMP and uh, he commented and I just said, Quay, man, like the, the internet needs your humor. Like you got to find a way to start creating content. And I, you know, I don't, I don't want to rag on him because I know he, you know, it's probably in the back of his mind that, but I tell you that guy is a, he is a comedic talent for sure. Yes. He's one of those guys where you're walking with him and like, he's just noticing things that no one else would notice. Like you're walking in a parking lot and there's like a puddle and he finds a way to, <clears throat> excuse me, to make the puddle funny. <laughs> Frog in my throat. Anyway, oh, that's no, great. Yeah. No, that's fair. hundred percent. Well, I mean, I, so like, yeah, I mean, with Quay, like good memories and stuff like that, like see, like considering you've been in the league since its inception, like what, what would you say is like some of your like best memories that you have? Like whether it be humorous, just like heartworm, whatever it is, appropriate whatever you want to say what you no, say i got your, you your best moment? um i was thinking about this for a minute too me and shane chopped it up for a little bit before so it was something that was on my mom but um mm-hmm. something that one of my favorite memories you probably remember is just my coming up when i came in i was unknown like i really stayed in my stuff to my friend group yeah. and i remember the first game of the season we flew to new york we played the first game we flew to new york i was in cvs i believe with my teammates and I seen Goofy. I didn't know him at the time. He was like, uh, he says something about what you gonna do out there. And I'm like, um, cause you know, we got Dimes and Day Friday, they they run the show. He's like, what you gonna do out there? And I told him I'm like, I'm gonna get some buckets. Like it's 2K at the end of the day. Like that was just, that was just always my mindset. Greens. So when I got out there, hit my first shot, I heard, who was uh so who was ball like seeing? That's what somebody in the Heat said. That was my first game. I played the Heat. Somebody on the team said who was ball like seeing, and I finished <laughs> that game with like eighteen. My first game of the Ooh. year, like seventeen, eighteen. Go. So my whole coming up after that, getting my name to the uh, higher on the ranks, it was just like that was just like a great moment for me because I went from nobody yes. to somebody in the two K community, and people had like people had to respect me at that point. You had the game plan for me. Like we're not beating the Mavs unless we prep for. Dom's, Dom's, they fry and seem now. I love that, man. It, did Goofy get drafted this year? Speaking of him, is nah, he still Goofy at the league? Has, Goofy's still out. He hasn't been in since oh. uh, season four, I believe, when he was with the Blazers. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, last season. And then I thought, I, I, I figured he'd be picked up because he was always such a good talent. Obviously, pers- a personality, and I find him hilarious. But uh, as we've been talking about, right, sometimes mm-hmm. personalities in the room, like, you know, when you're on a, a team that's struggling, yeah, it th- doesn't match. You need those guys who are yeah. blue guys. Go with the flow. Be water, as uh, Bruce Lee says. Yeah, I remember uh, I remember Goofy used to po- post all them uh, them sweep gifts or something like that on Twitter when they yeah. played the sweep team or something. <laughs> Oh no! I always thought that it was so funny to me. I was like, "God, he, he, he's a true too." You know what I miss the most is Walnut and Mama. When Walnut and Mama were dominating the league, and they would go on live after the game, yes. like that was that was some of the funniest content, dude. Like that that the was so show. natural. That was the freak show. That was so naturally funny. And you know, obviously, everyone's trying to be brand safe, so those vods would always get deleted right after. But like that's when i looked at that i was like this is why the 2k league is a good product like there's personalities in it i thought the game was really cool like when i would watch you know 2k on twitch you know 
as a non 2k player i just didn't find like watching the stage guys like that exciting you know it just kind of seemed very one-dimensional whereas when i would watch 5v5 like early 2k league stuff i was like this is a really good product and i kind of wish that you know more of the consumers obviously could get their hands on it right because i felt like there would just yeah. be a real appetite to play that type of game but it was like a combination of that like really cool broadcast where you had like all this banter like you never see in esports like literally fights breaking out obviously famously yeah. uh and uh and then after that, on top of that, you had these guys who were funny and could go on their own live and just like entertain hundreds of people. And I'm like, this is a product. We need to just scale this uh, and, you know, the 2K League will be in a good place. And I still believe that it, that it will be. You know, I think as we're seeing this whole kind of bubble burst around esports at the moment, uh, the, I'm bullish on the 2K League. You know, I think it's like it's, it's relatively efficient to run and it's obviously always going to be tied to these powerhouse NBA organizations for the most part. Shout out the expansion teams who are who are doing really well um, for themselves right now. So that's awesome. But they've just got a runway, you know, and like esports has always been like a next generation thing for me. It's like once the group, that's coming up now as fans can pass that on to their kids. Like that's when it becomes like generational fandom. And I think the 2k league will still be here at that point, to be honest. So yeah. things are looking, Oh, I don't, I don't know if you guys heard that, but it appears that once again, Seem, in case you don't know, the podcast ends when our Uber Eats gets delivered, and it's been 18 episodes, and I am 18 and 0. Mine always gets delivered before Phil's. Shout out to Uber Eats. They know who their VIPs are. Three minutes. 18 and 0. They got me beat by three minutes. <laughs> 18 and 0, money. man. It's just tough in LA. Yeah. I think it's the traffic. I, I think that, that must be. be it because like, the food's always delicious. It's just like. I take a minute to get there, you know? And it is kind of around that lunch hour, that power hour for lunch for all these big wigs. That's true. It's 424 here, so it's not exactly the busiest time in the afternoon for people ordering food right now. Yeah, anyway, see, man, right. dude, honestly, it's been it's been great getting to know you. Um, I'm going to be, you know, at the Raptors facility uh, at least a few times this season. So it'll be good to you know see you in person again. And uh, hearing your story has been awesome. So, you know, getting a little insight into your mindset and your mentality. You know, you're exactly what a, a team like this needs, you know, a stable veteran. Definitely. And dude. Don't lose sight of that vision of becoming a coach. And, and like I said, don't just count on the fact that there's going to be an opportunity when you suddenly want it. Build that for yourself. Yeah. Every day, just wake up. What could I do today? Move it one inch. I'm telling you, you move it one inch every day for a year, you'll be amazed at how much more established you are as a coach and in the minds of everybody around the league as a prospect to become a coach in a post-player career. So yeah. do that. I would. I got you. Easy stuff, man. Now, yeah, certainly appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Again, as Shane says, it's very enlightening. Uh, it's just a good time in general, man. But this has been another episode of the Raptors 2K podcast brought to you by Uber Eats. Episode 18 in the books. Like, comment, subscribe. You know the vibes. And we will see you on the next one. Take care. See you, Phil.